Hey everyone, finally back with some more streaming tech videos. And I saw in the comments that you'd mentioned that you might want to see some more stuff about XSplit. So as you know, I used to work at XSplit. So I thought it'd be cool to check in on XSplit 4.0, which was released recently. Now this isn't a sponsored video or anything. I just like to check in on the software and see what's been done. So there has been some quality of life and UI improvements and also some powerful new features added. So for this episode of Stream Tech, let's check out XSplit 4.0. So first, let's take a look at the UI improvements and the UX improvements. So the first thing you can see here is that in the UI, you can actually resize the size of the preview window and the source list window, which is pretty handy. Hopefully this is a preview of things to come. Like you can actually break out different parts of the main UI into like their own sub windows, kind of like you can in OBS. Now there's also been dedicated stream and record buttons added. I think this is pretty handy because some people weren't used to like digging through menus to start their stream or start the recording. And there's also a dedicated button to taking screenshots. Now, I think a lot of people forget that you can take screenshots with XSplit. And this is actually a really handy tool to really quickly make thumbnails for your YouTube videos. So you can kind of composite something and just take a quick screenshot of it and put it in YouTube. Now, the other thing is that there's a dedicated button to access the audio mixer. And I think the audio mixer is something that's been added to XSplit for a while, but I think people haven't really realized that it's there. So it's pretty cool that now you can just pop it out. I kind of like having a separate audio mixer window rather than everything kind of grouped into one and kind of cluttered. So that's pretty neat, but that's about it for the UI and UX improvements. So let's take a look at some of the new features in 4.0. Now for the new features, the recurring theme with this version of XSplit is a lot of important new audio features. So the first one I want to cover is the ability to actually monitor stream only audio. So stream only audio is basically an extra audio device that you install when you install XSplit. And you can set stream only audio for things like say your web alerts, like your Twitch alerts, like any kind of donation or sub goal. Now, a lot of people, they don't want to hear the same alert sound over and over again. So if you set it to stream only, the alert sound will still play back on the stream, but you won't actually hear it. And another reason why this is useful is that you can actually set this so that when you're recording your videos, you can actually set the stream only audio to only play back on a different track. So when you're editing it, you can take out those stream alerts, especially if you use like media alerts or stuff that might have copyright issues. But the cool thing is, is that now in the audio mixer, there's actually a meter for the stream only audio. So before you had no way to really gauge how loud the stream only audio was. So maybe you uploaded a Twitch alert clip that was really hot. So it would just blow out all your audio. So now you can actually meter this and adjust the levels accordingly using the new audio mixer. Now, the next big audio feature and probably the most exciting one is the addition of audio DSP effects. Now, unfortunately, you can only apply this to your microphone input source. Hopefully, you'll be able to apply these to basically any source and expert in the future. But that's because the current DSPs probably affect microphones the most. But these are basically things that you can use to adjust the incoming signal from your microphone source. All right, this is what my microphone sounds like without the DSP effects turned on. Here's me hitting some keys. All right, here's what my microphone sounds like with some DSP effects turned on in XSplit. And then I'm going to hit some keys. All right, you can see if the noise gate worked there or not. So the first two are pretty straightforward and have already existed in XSplit, which is the noise suppression and the noise gate. Now this noise suppression, I mean, it's not like RTX voice. It's not going to cut out a vacuum or something, but if you have maybe some air conditioning or just some light low rumble noise, really good for getting rid of that. And the noise gate is another more traditional way of trying to remove noise. So basically you set a threshold and the microphone won't activate unless the volume goes above that threshold. So basically you want to set it so that only your voice is coming through and not like your microphone clicking sounds or your controller sounds. Now, even though the noise gate did exist in XSplit before, it's actually been improved because before it used to have this weird one to 10 level for the threshold. So you didn't know what decibel value you were setting it at. So you didn't know if, you know, you should set it at five, what that meant, like negative 20, negative 16. So now that it's set in decibels, you can actually make some noise in the mixer and you can see what that noise volume is. And then basically you then set the threshold higher than that so that that noise won't activate your mic. So another setting to take note of when you're using the noise gate is the hold value. So the hold value basically says that once you go above the threshold, this is how long 
the microphone will stay open and if no noise above the threshold comes through, it'll wait for it. And if it doesn't detect it, it'll close it again. So this is important because if you set it too short, you might get this weird like kind of choppy effect where your voice is cutting out. And if you set it too long, then too many noises might come through. So it might be a bunch of keyboard noise or other noise. So just kind of tweak it and see what value is good enough where you're not getting cut off and you're also not letting in too much noise when you speak. Now the next DSP effect I think will have the biggest effect, especially with your voice and using it as a microphone source. And this is the parametric EQ. Now EQ is its own topic for its own video, but thankfully XSplit has given you just enough options to modify things uh, in a way that will definitely you'll hear a difference, but has kept it so that it's not so complicated, especially for beginners. But basically in simple terms, EQ basically allows you to raise or lower certain frequencies in your voice and this kind of changes the characteristics of your voice. I would highly recommend hooking up like another headphone or something to your PC and setting that as the preview device. And that way you can kind of monitor the changes that you make to the EQ and know what kind of setting you get. The only other way to do this would be to do a bunch of local recordings and listen to playback. So definitely just hook up another headphone, set it as an audio preview device in XSplit and then start adjusting your EQ. It'll sound a little weird because it's a little bit delayed, but it's still better than, you know, having to go back and forth between recordings. So I'm going to go through a few of the settings that you can adjust in the EQ. Now, this is not a comprehensive EQ tutorial. These are just some basic settings to get maybe in a desired effect. So on the low side of things, this is the low end. This is basically like the bass frequencies. So for most people's voices around 100 to 200 is where you want to find the spot and adjust it. Now the Q value basically determines the width of what you're adjusting. So it could be a really narrow, small margin, or it could be really wide and affect a lot of frequencies. So we're going to go with kind of like a middle setting right here. And then the gain basically raises or lowers that. So you kind of want like that podcaster boomy voice. You're probably going to want to raise those frequencies between 100 to 200. So the mid frequencies can be used in a couple different ways and everyone's voice characteristics are different. What may be good for me might not be good for you, but generally speaking around the 1000 to 2000 range, you might want to decrease this because sometimes these are some harsh things. Or if you want like more vocal clarity or that nice radio-ish sound, you might want to boost around 4000 to 5000. You'll have to make the choice. I definitely recommend trying either reducing between 1000 to 2000 or raising 4000 to 5000 and see what's most pleasing to your own ears. Now the high frequencies can be a bit similar to the mid range, but basically around 8,000 and 9,000, you generally want to try and boost around this range and it can add a better sense of clarity. But with most of these ranges, try not to raise the gain too high or too low, especially if you go too high, you can start clipping and you definitely don't want any of that. And like I said, this is going to be for everyone to experiment with. Unfortunately, I can't give you universal settings that are going to work with everyone. These are just some general guidelines, play around with it and find out what you like. So the last DSP effect is a compressor. And to be honest, compressors can be kind of complicated for most people, but to make it as simple as possible, the compressor takes the highest highs and the lowest lows and kind of smooshes them together. Now, this is really good for your viewers, especially if you're someone that can be really reactive and go high and low on your volume. That way you don't blow out your viewers eardrums. So let's do some basic settings for compressors. And again, this is something that you should really play with and see what you like the most. So probably the most important setting for the compressor is the threshold. And basically once you set this level, everything above it gets kind of brought down by the compressor and you don't want to set it too high or else the compressor really isn't doing anything. And if you set it too low, some noises kind of get raised up a bit and you don't want to pick some of those low end noises up. So this, Compression is basically set by the ratio and for simplicity's sake, just set this to two. And then there's also the attack and the release. This basically says how fast the compressor activates and stops once it crosses the threshold. So for simplicity's sake, kind of just leave it at the default settings, play with it how you like. But probably the most important setting is the output volume. So the output volume, when you compress something, it naturally lowers the volume. So you want to use this output gain to basically raise it back up to the level it should be. Now, for simplicity's sake, you pretty much just want the level to have its final output at between negative six to negative three dB. That way you're not getting too close to clipping. 
And this is always going to vary depending on your microphone source or your audio capture source. But this is why you want to set the compressor last after everything else is set. Set the compressor last because then you can use the output gain to set those nice levels, nice clean levels between negative six and negative three so that, you know, you're not clipping your audio and you're not too hot and you're not too quiet and everyone can hear you pretty clearly. So another really powerful feature for XSplit 4.0 is the expanded recording features. So if you're someone that likes to stream, then also put that content on YouTube, you can now create multiple local recording instances. So you can have multiple streams and multiple recordings. And the really cool part about this is that you can choose different encoders. So let's say you have a pretty beefy CPU on your PC. You can set that to stream. And let's say you have an Nvidia GPU, you can use NVENC for recording or vice versa. And this way you can also set the scenes that you record, right? So you can have a main streaming scene, right? But then you can have local recordings going for say, just your full gameplay or just your full face cam. And then you can hand that over to an editor or do it yourself. And basically you can get better reactions and just have way more editing flexibility by recording all these different separate scenes. So I think that's really awesome. I think th those of you on Twitch or on YouTube who use both platforms to monetize your content, this is a really awesome tool. If you have the resources, if you have like a beastly streaming PC and also like a separate video editor, you can do so much more engaging and crazy and super useful content using these expanded recording features. So that about does it for the XBit 4.0 update. Now there's some other features too, like if you're on a single screen or like a laptop setup, there's the in-game HUD. Basically you can control XBit from inside your game. There's also a streaming dashboard now. It's a separate extension. You can see like streaming events and you see your chat and you can even switch between different services if you're multi-streaming. So I wanna know from you, like what do you think of the new XBit update? Have you switched away from XSplit or have you thought about trying XSplit again? And also like what kind of audio systems or audio software are you using to kind of change your microphone? Like are you using VSTs or are you hoping XSplit adds VSTs in the future? And just in general, like what new features do you feel you want to see from streaming software? Like I feel streaming software have been kind of like slowly adding features, but there hasn't been really one big giant leap in streaming tech. So kind of what are you hoping to see from streaming software in the future? Let me know in the comments. Thanks again for watching. Leave a like if this is useful and subscribe if you like that base. Catch you on the next one.